Hey YouTube, Ed here with Jack of All Trades and welcome back to the uh, channel and welcome back to another video. So it's been almost a year and I've had the Titanium Unlimited 200 welder in my possession and I've been using it a lot. And I promised you when I made that video, which got a whole lot of, of views on it, it's by far the most viewed video in my channel. I promised you that after about a year I would come back and I would tell you about how it's holding up its durability and how it works and just to let you know if I basically still like the machine. So I've got a bit of a welding project here. I had somebody buy some uh, chassis plates from me to build a 2x48 belt grinder and I figured as long as I'm going to be doing the welding and the drilling and the cutting I would, uh, I would video the process and talk to you about the welder. In fact, a lot of the equipment that I've done reviews on or done projects with over the past year are going to come into the fold to make this project or to, to get this job done. So we'll talk about actually a little bit of everything that, I, that I'm using uh, in the project, but the focus obviously is going to be on the welder and to let you know how the welder's working. So with that, uh, let's go ahead and let's get the camera turned around. Let's, uh, let's start the project and let's talk about how the, uh, how the welder is running and the other equipment that I'm using in my shop. Okay, so let's first talk real quickly about the uh, Bauer portable bandsaw that I bought and made the, uh, made the table for. I use this thing all the time. I have not had any problems whatsoever with the saw except for wearing out blades, which is what I consider normal wear and tear. And the saw gets used very, very regularly. Uh, I'm very happy with the choice of foot pedal that I used as far as the dead man switch. Uh, the foot pedal works very, very well, but the saw works really good too. Now, I have to qualify. There are There is one change that I want to make on the saw, and I haven't figured out how I'm going to do it yet, but I need to anchor it somehow or find, find some better way to keep it from sliding around because when I'm pushing on the work to feed it through the blade, the table wants to move around and slide around a bit, and it's just, uh, it's just kind of an annoyance. It doesn't deter my using the machine at all. It's, there's just got to be a better way to do it and find some way to anchor it to the bench or, in, or anchor it to the table. Now you can see I've got it on my welding table and I'm butting it up against the workbench to uh, keep it from pushing backwards, but that's just a temporary fix. Okay, so the next step in the process here is got to drill some holes in this piece of plate uh, to accept a, a welded on nut. So I'm going to use my drill press. I did a review on this Harbor Freight drill press. Uh, I like the drill press well enough. It seems to be working just fine. It does the drilling that I need it to do. Uh, is it primo quality equipment? No, it's not. Does it work? Absolutely. Uh, it is working just fine. Now, the one big gripe I have about this is the, uh, the post that holds and supports the entire drill press is not, is not affixed to the base, so it wants to rotate around and swivel around, and it doesn't affect the functionality of it. It's more of an annoyance. The other thing is, is as I push down on the, uh, on the drill or as I run the handle to run the drill into the work, the uh, work table flexes. It's not real horribly sturdy, uh, but it, it gets the job done at the end of the day. It, it does work and it does work as it's intended. It's just, you can tell that the, the quality of the equipment just isn't quite what it, what it really should be if you're going to be using professional grade equipment, but it does function and it does get the dot job done as it should. And it drill, at the end of the day, it drills holes, which is exactly what I needed to do. The motor's pretty strong. Uh, I don't get a whole lot of belt slipping, and it does, it does the work that I need it to do uh, on a very regular and daily basis. And once again, I have had no issues with this machine. Uh, every time I hit the switch, it starts up, it runs, and I use it pretty regularly. Uh, I bet you I use it two, three times a week sometimes, and it always runs, it always works. It does exactly what I need to do. It's just not your, not your prime primo piece of equipment. But then again, we are talking about a Harbor Freight, uh, Harbor Freight power tool here. 
So at the end of the day, am I disappointed I bought it? No. Would I buy it again? Yeah, I think so. All right, let's just talk real quick about my uh, slide away welding table here. I did it. This was actually a project that I did and did a video on it. So glad I made this thing. It is be it is proven to be invaluable. I the drawer sliders are working perfectly. They're showing no signs of loosening up, and I bet you I pull this thing out on a daily basis in some way, shape, or form. It might not even be for welding. Maybe I just need a another work surface. Whatever the case may be. Uh, I'm so happy that I made this and it's been just an absolutely invaluable piece in my shop and it provides me with a metal work surface that I can ground the welder to and, and weld on and it just works absolutely fantastically. I'm so glad I did this and I'm so glad I built it. Uh, couldn't be happier with it and it is, it is something I use on a very regular basis. All right, now let's get into talking about what we came here to talk about, the welder itself, uh, the Titanium Unlimited 200 welder. So like I said in the intro, I've had this thing for just about a year now, actually almost right on a year, because uh, I didn't make the video until well after I, well after I had purchased it. Uh, the welder itself is actually running without flaw. It, it runs very well. I'm on about my uh, seventh tank of 7525. And the welder, the welder works good. It tacks good, it welds good. Uh, it welds on 220, it welds on 110. I'm still using the original regulator that came with it. And if you'll remember in my original video, I wasn't horribly impressed with the regulator, but it is working. So uh, it, does, it does fluctuate a little bit and I should probably go ahead and replace it, but for the time being, it is still working after a year of use, and it makes it makes good beads. I get good penetration on 220. If you have the ability to run 220, this machine will really burn some material. I've I've welded as thick as three eighths with this, uh, albeit it is a multi pass situation, but the machine itself welds really really well, and I just have no complaints about it. It. It always strikes an arc and it always welds. Now, if I do have to make a complaint, uh, I do notice that periodically, uh, especially when I'm running on the 110 circuit, it doesn't happen in the 220, it hasn't happened yet anyway. When I initially strike the arc, when I initially squeeze the trigger to, trigger to strike the arc, it'll actually burn the wire back and uh, hesitate for just a second. So when I strike the arc, it'll, it'll strike It'll burn the wire back almost to the tip and then the wire will continue to feed and then it'll strike an arc and it'll weld just fine. But it does that periodically on the 110 and 110 only. And that's minor in consequence in, in reality. All you have to do is keep your finger on the trigger and continue welding and it will continue to weld. But the machine actually does really well. It burns through mill scale quite nicely. You don't have to clean it. Uh, I know there's people out there that say you should always clean the mill scale off before you weld. Uh, that is true. It, it does make a better weld. And if you're welding structural steel, totally agree. You should always clean the mill scale off. But for the home project, do it yourself for guy. It's really not horribly necessary. And the machine will actually burn through the mill scale and, and weld just fine. In fact, that nut that I just welded on there, that was a zinc coated nut and I didn't even burn or grind off the zinc coating before I welded it. I just welded it and the machine welds it just fine. It doesn't seem to have a problem with it. So it's a good strong welder. It's a good accurate welder. The arc is really nice and stable. Uh, if you've got it set correctly, it doesn't, doesn't create a lot of weld spatter. Uh, it functions very good. I'm using the, uh, the Vulcan or Harbor Freight 035 hardwire. I'm using 7525 gas which is primarily what I use for most everything. And it, it does weld very, very nicely. Uh, on 220, if you have 220 capability, it's legit. It, it really does a nice job welding. I have yet to hit the duty cycle on it. Uh, I've yet to have the machine shut down because it either got too hot or had been used too much. Uh, I haven't had that problem whatsoever. And it just runs. I, I haven't even, actually, I haven't even replaced a tip on it yet. 
And I've done a lot of welding. I welded that entire go-kart project with it. I've welded a lot of these plates with it. Uh, I welded my stand for my portable bandsaw with it. And I've actually honestly yet to have to replace a tip. So that tells me that the machine is running really, really well. I don't get a lot of buildup in the cone or around the tip. A little bit, I need to clean it out periodically with my whelpers. But the machine actually runs very, very clean. And it does a nice job of welding and I'm very, very happy with it. So I'll quit talking here a little bit. We'll just, uh, we'll just let the video run and I'll weld a couple of more things here and then we'll continue on. All right, let's talk about a belt grinder real quick. Now, this is a this is a two by forty eight belt grinder that I actually made. Uh, it's running off of one side of an eight inch bench grinder, a Jet eight inch bench grinder, and I actually have a video on this as well. But uh, I can't I can't stress how valuable a piece of equipment this is. I I use this thing all the time, and if you are a woodworker or a metal worker or even just a home DIYer who likes to do little projects here and there. I can't tell you how many times I've just been able to fire this thing up and knock off a burr or round out an edge or round off a corner or any number of things. You know, like here, I'm just, I'm smoothing out the weld that I just applied to this because I need a clean, flat surface. I can't tell you how invaluable it is to have a belt grinder. So if, if I can impress upon anything to you, Every shop, I think, should have a belt grinder of some kind to just do little things like this, which you really can't put a price on how much easier it makes your life. And so even like right here, I've, I've got a nut that I welded onto the end of this piece of square tubing, and I'm just using the belt grinder to round it off and smooth it off. 
and it just absolutely is invaluable for jobs like this. I mean, yeah, I could have used a four inch angle grinder to do this job, but then I got to turn the workpiece all the time and then use the grinder that way. Whereas with this thing, I can actually rotate it around using the work table and I can just get a very nice smooth edge. So I don't, I don't care if you get a two by 72, a two by 48, or even a one by 30 Harbor Freight belt grinder, which you can pick up for under $50. I would highly recommend getting a belt grinder for your shop. Uh, it just, you'll find it invaluable in the things that you'll use it for. All right, back to a little more use of the uh, Titanium 200. So again, I, I can't fault this machine. It's given me absolutely no problems. It's had no problems. I haven't had any issues. I haven't had any customer service complaints. It just, it just runs. The only complaint I do have is that every once in a while when you're, when you're starting the arc, it's a little bit of a soft start. In fact, you'll notice right here, watch the way this thing starts. So you see, you see that little hesitation right there? And that only happens on the 110. And what it is doing there is when the wire first initially hits the steel and strikes an arc, it, it burns it back on the tip. And I call that a soft start. I don't know if that's the right terminology or not, but it, it seems like it's a, it's a little... It's a, little, it's, it's a little soft in the beginning when it, when it starts the arc and it'll burn that wire back. But that only happens on 110. And honestly, that's primarily how I use this thing. This, my shop here has only got a, a 110 outlet. I have a 220 in my bigger garage, but uh, I use this thing primarily on 110 and it's been absolutely flawless and trouble-free for me. I haven't had to call customer service. I haven't had any concerns. It just simply runs. So you'll see here, it'll do it again. See there, it just a it, little bit of a, a hiccup, a little bit of a hesitation in the start. And then once it gets going, it just runs and it welds just like it should. So like I said, it's a minor thing. It's a fairly inconvenient thing, but you can see right there, there's nothing wrong with that weld. And so there you have it. So after almost a year of use, I've still had no problems with this machine. Uh, pretty much just trouble free. Like I, like I said earlier in the video, the only problem I really have with the machine is that every once in a while when you initially start the arc, it burns the wire off before the arc starts. But then it just, it recovers almost immediately. And for what this is, which is what this machine is designed for as a home shop or small job shop kind of workplace this thing does just absolutely fantastically uh, i've been through what seven bottles of gas now i've welded trailers i've welded a go-kart i've welded grinder frames i've welded all kinds of things with this thing i i use it on a very regular basis and i've had several bottles of gas through it zero problems whatsoever I'm, i couldn't be happier with the purchase now i understand harbor freight to freight has subsequently uh, raise the price of these welders and that doesn't come without surprise considering today's uh, current environment with inflation and gas prices and everything else that's going up and the fact that the welder turned out to be far more popular I think than what they anticipated it to be and supply and demand issues these things were flying off of the shelves and anybody who's taken business 101 understands the concept of supply and demand and when there's demand prices go up so it's it's just like everything else in the world ammunition ammunition is in high demand right now and subsequently the prices have gone up so at any rate the machine works really really well i couldn't be i couldn't be happier with it and along with that you know all the other equipment in the shop that i've done reviews on over the past year you know my my drill press is still running strong still runs great have no problems with it have no concerns with it my portable bandsaw that's mounted to my homemade table. I use it on a very regular basis. It works very, very well. Uh, my my 2x48 home built belt grinder is still running strong after a whole year and plus change of use and I'm very, very happy with it. So all the things that I've done reviews on in this in this shop over the past year have have just been working out really well. But the focus of this video is this welder and this welder is working phenomenally. I have no complaints with it whatsoever. 
with that, uh, I hope you I hope you appreciate this video and my almost one year review or continuing review of the titanium welder. I haven't done any more tigging with this thing. I'm not a great TIG welder. Uh, argon is a bit of a bit expensive. I haven't had a need to TIG weld. So in reality, I could have very easily gotten away with, with just a 200 amp MIG welder because I don't use the TIG option very much. However, I do use the stick option quite regularly. And I am going to buy the spool gun because there's been a couple of instances where I could have very, very much used the spool gun to weld aluminum. But I apologize. I'm not a great TIG welder. Admittedly, I haven't had a lot of experience with it. And I just haven't used the TIG function very often. I know it works and probably in the hands of somebody who's far more capable at TIG welding than I, it probably would work pretty good. Uh, I just haven't had the opportunity or the need to use it, and I certainly haven't had the need to spend $100 on a bottle of Argon to do testing on it. So maybe I'll maybe I'll start getting into it a little more. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Uh, but I do know the TIG function does work. It's just I haven't had a need to do it. So with that, let's wrap this video up. Uh, if you like this video and you like what you're seeing and you like the content of this video, please do me the favor of hitting that like and subscribe button. Make sure you ring that notification bell so you don't, so you don't miss up on any upcoming videos. Uh, and that's, that's all I ever ask for for your support is the subscriptions and the comments and, and things of that effect. So I've recently reached 4,000 subscribers, which is a pretty, pretty decent milestone. I hit that 5,000 mark, I'll probably do another giveaway. I don't know what that giveaway will be, but we'll, we'll think of something and we'll think of something that's fairly cool. So with that, this is Ed with Jack of All Trades. Thank you for riding along. And as always, I appreciate all of my subscribers and we will see you on the next video.